Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my essential developer tools that I use whenever I'm building blockchain applications. All right, so before we get into all that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, then you need to join my free training on my website over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So I want to show you all the essential developer tools that I use when I'm building blockchain applications for Ethereum. All right. So there's several tools of the trade here, and you might have seen some of these in my previous tutorials, but I figured I would, you know, make a video that includes, you know, most of them because they're kind of spread out over different videos depending on what the tutorial is. And I want to kind of put a lot of them that I use a lot in one place, okay? So the first one, you know, is your basic terminal. I use this all the time. You see me running commands in the terminal, uh, opening my text editor, running tests, deploying applications, things like that. Um, but in addition to just the basic terminal, I also use something called Tmux, which some of you have asked me about. Um, so Tmux is a terminal multiplexer, and it allows you to do a lot of things. So Tmux has this idea of sessions, and I can basically, you know, create a new session like this, uh, called, just call it YouTube for now, it's going to create a new window inside of there called YouTube. All right, and you can see that it's open this here at the bottom of the screen. I'll just resize it in case you can't see it. Uh, so YouTube is the session name, and YouTube is now the window name. And once I've got this session running and a window running, I can split my uh, window panes like this, right? And I can do them horizontally, right? And I can basically create a big grid system. And this is what I use a lot. Basically, I default to a four-pane setup. I can, you know, run tests in one window, run a console in another window, maybe a server process or something, and then just basic terminal commands in another. And I, I do this all the time for my you know, development environment. And when I have a big monitor like this, I can, you know, increase the window size and add more panes if I want to, right? So I use Tmux quite a bit. Another cool feature about Tmux is that like I can recall this session from any terminal window. I can just say Tmux a dash T uh, YouTube and I can recall everything that I just had, right? So if I close, um, you know, the uh, terminal window, I can still reopen my Tmux session. You can also run Tmux sessions remotely, like with SSH and stuff like that. So if I wanted to keep a Tmux session running like on a web server and develop, you know, remotely, I could do it that way. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with Tmux, but that's really what I use it for uh, in my bread and butter use case on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so I'm gonna close that down. So my next uh, thing that I use all the time is my text editor. I use Sublime Text. Um, you see me using that pretty exclusively throughout my tutorials. I've just been a long time Sublime Text user. I like it quite a bit. There's lots of other good text editors out there. I'm kind of just a creature of habit um, and don't really see a good reason for me to pay the cost of learning all the key commands for other, um, you know, text editors. I say you can't use them. There's lots of good ones, like I said. Uh, a lot of people like... Um, Let's see, Atom Text Editor, they also like uh, VS Code, another pretty popular one as far as newer text editors go. So you can check that out out if you want to. Um, in order to get to speed up for blockchain development with Sublime Text, um, there's a package that you can install to uh, include the Solidity programming language syntax highlighting. So lots of great things you can do with Sublime Text, like configure it and add packages and things like that. Okay, so I really like Sublime Text. So let's talk about some libraries that I use a lot. So the first one is you know Web3.js. This is the main JavaScript library for interacting with Ethereum. So basically, you know, if you want to read any kind of data from Ethereum or uh, you know deploy smart contracts, interact with smart contracts, do anything like that, Web3.js is a go-to if you're um, you know, using JavaScript. So if you're building a client-side application that talks to Ethereum, Web3.js is a must. Um, I also like uh, Web3, the Python version. So let's see, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, let me see if I can just find it. Yeah, Web3 for Python. I've got several tutorials on that. You can see these pop up on Google. Um, but Web3 for Python, this is the one I like. Um, you can do a lot. So I have also been building recently a lot more uh, backends that talk to the blockchain, and Python is a really good tool for that. So there's lots of um, you know great frameworks for building web applications that uh, run in Python, and if you're in that scenario, then Web3 for Python is a really great tool because it allows you to communicate with the Ethereum blockchain on your backend as well. You can also do that with JavaScript if you're running a JavaScript backend, but I find myself uh, using JavaScript less and less on the server these days and using more Python. Um, so what you can do with Web3, 
in Python is very similar to Web3.js. Um, basically, you know, you can interact with the Ethereum blockchain. You can read information from it. You can write transactions to it. Um, you can sign transactions on behalf of other accounts. You can deploy smart contracts, all kinds of stuff. You know, if you had a backend that wanted you to, you know, create new smart contracts uh, with a click of a button or something like that, this is a really good tool that would allow you to do that, right? So inside the Python ecosystem, um, you know, there's like Django, uh, which is a pretty popular web application development framework. If you're building APIs, like Django REST framework is a really popular option. That's one I've used quite a bit for uh, backend development for blockchain. Um, also, Flask is another one. So Flask is a, a Django, sorry, not Django, a Python backend. Um, that's a little different from uh, Django. I would say f- Django is more opinionated and Flask it kind of allows you to configure a lot more things yourself. There's a little more work to do to get set up with Flask, but um, if you have a very specific use case in mind, then it's it's really nice as well. And so I don't want to get into any kind of like debates about which one's best. I just want to give you both options. Okay, so let's see here. As far as uh, developing other decentralized applications and just writing smart contracts, um, then Truffle is you know a clear uh, tool that I use all the time on the channel, um, to, you know, create smart contracts from scratch, deploy them to the blockchain, write tests against them. I even, you know, have built client side applications inside of the Truffle framework as well. in several of my tutorials, um, and I've even done it on client projects as well. So Truffle is a must if you're trying to, you know, build Ethereum smart contracts and just, you know, take advantage of all the awesome tools that the team at Truffle has, um, you know, come out with, right? So check out Truffle if you haven't already. I've got several tutorials on how to use that. All right, so let's see what else here. Um, As far as, you know, creating full stack applications go, you know, React.js is something that I use a lot. Um, You know, there's different opinions on, you know, different JavaScript frameworks for creating front-end applications. You know, a lot of people that use Vue, you know, is another option. I've been using React for a long time, and it's React is pretty popular, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem. So it was kind of uh, fortuitous that uh, I had had some React experience when I started working with Ethereum. And yeah, so I like React as a component-based library that allows you to create your code into these modular components um, that are reusable, you know, uses a uh, idea of context uh, with with props and, you know, component state and things like that. Um, React is really awesome. I've got several tutorials on how to, you know, create blockchain applications with React. And also inside my blockchain developer bootcamp, um, I show you how to build a full stack blockchain application with a React front end, right? I've got a workflow for uh, actually integrating Web3.js, which I talked about earlier. Um, Sorry, this is Web3 for Python. Um, Let's see here, Web3.js with React um, to like manage your accounts and stuff like that, right? So here's some more uh, videos on how to use Web3 that I created uh, as well, okay? So let's see what else. Um, as far as building full stack applications go, uh, going back to the Python thing for backends, uh, Docker is a tool that I've been using more and more these days. Um, Docker is a way to basically, basically create containers um, that allows you to run your application inside of uh, um, a, a predefined environment. It's kind of like a virtual machine almost. Not really, but that's a pretty close analogy. So basically like, you can create a Docker container based on an image, right? An image is just a snapshot of your environment that allows you to build a container or an environment for your app to run in. And it basically, you know, defines uh, like the operating system you're using and all the dependencies, all the system dependencies for your project. And you can, you know, pull in um, everything you need from there. The big problem that Docker solves is basically like, when someone comes to you and says, hey, you know, this application works on my computer, but it doesn't work on your computer, or this application works on my computer, it doesn't work on staging, or it doesn't work on production, et cetera, et cetera. That's basically the problem that Docker solves. And there's some trade-offs, um, but for for Python backends, for blockchain, I've been using this more and more because it allows... Um, me to basically ensure that uh, my environments are consistent across platforms. A lot of these Python libraries or even JavaScript libraries um, that use the blockchain rely on system dependencies that are in other languages and uh, ensuring that you have those languages installed and other dependencies uh, on your system properly is key or else you're going to find yourself running into deployment issues and just general environment issues if you aren't able to... um, 
you know, do that. And that's, that's the big value that I've gotten out of Docker. So let's talk about, you know, deployment solutions for your, for your applications for blockchain. You know, uh, while we're talking about Docker, we can talk about backends. Um, you know, a couple different uh, solutions that I use. If I'm using Docker, um, lately, honestly, I've just been using Amazon Web Services. So uh, they've got a couple different offerings. There's their, um, uh, there they have a they have one that's specific for Docker. But honestly, I've just been using Amazon EC2. Uh, for smaller projects, they have a different service that's made specifically for Docker, and also, um, you know, a service that's that's built specifically for like scalable web applications, like Elastic Beanstalk and stuff like that. So, there's lots of different um, options that you can explore with Amazon Web Services for deploying your backends. But for smaller stuff that uh, doesn't receive a lot of traffic, I've just been using Amazon EC2. It doesn't scale quite as well as some of their other offerings, but um, it's been pretty seamless with my Docker setup. Uh, Okay, so let's see what else here. Another option is um, Heroku. So if you don't use Docker... um, Heroku is a pretty good option to get set up really fast. I've been a long time Heroku user. It's also really great for front end applications, like so for React apps. You know, Heroku has this idea of, like build packs, and it can honestly automatically like detect your uh, application setup and just get things rolling really fast with almost no configuration. I mean, that's what Heroku is really awesome about. It basically allows you to get started really quickly, and you can just provision paid resources to do all stuff on the back end. Some people don't like that idea because they like to configure things or they have a reason to configure things or they don't like the idea of paying a machine to do stuff for them over the long term. But the way I look at it is developer time is always more expensive than machine time, at least almost always, um, or many times it is. And, you know, I'd, I'd gladly pay the cost on the back end of not having to do things myself uh, and, and get started fast. And that's really what Heroku does a good job of. Um, as far as front end deployments, a lot of people like Netlify. It's a new popular option. I've used it a few times. Um, I just have stuck with Heroku mostly. Like I said earlier, I'm kind of a creature of habit and they've done a good job. Um, let's see here. They do, uh, you can use Docker containers on Heroku. It's just a little more complicated and that's kind of what I've been using Amazon uh, Web Services for. Because if I'm, if I'm going to create something with Docker, I'm already having to do quite a bit of configuration. And if I'm in that mode, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use something like Amazon. Okay, so let's see here. One last thing I want to mention is specifically for writing, you know, code for smart contracts, um, the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library is really great. I've got a few tutorials about that on my channel. Um, Open Zeppelin Solidity is really great, uh, especially, you know, if you're trying to solve a problem with Ethereum and smart contracts that's already been solved and is widely used and you have to do it a bunch. There's uh, examples inside of here. You know, uh, crowd sales are a pretty good example. Um, a lot of times you'll want to customize things, like not all crowd sales work the same, uh, but you'll see lots of examples inside of here and you won't necessarily always just want to uh, import or copy and paste their examples. You might just want to use it as a reference, right? And one thing that's really good um, with the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library is just learning how to craft smart contracts properly. You know, if you just read through this and you look at some of their code examples, it's going to give you a really good idea of how to do things the right way. Because this is all community vetted code. Um, there's been lots of peer review, lots of input on this stuff. And, you know, the best practices are starting to emerge and you're going to see them emerge inside of here, right? You can learn lots of the blockchain um concepts just by reading through this library seriously and if you want to learn how to test smart contracts a lot better it's the same idea you just kind of read through the tests on here right and you look at like uh let's just see some of these you can see how to write the tests inside javascript they have really good patterns um all that kind of stuff okay so this is a invaluable resource and you know many thanks to the open zeppelin team for um continuing to host this and maintain this Uh, this is really awesome All right, guys, so that's a pretty big overview of the tools that I use frequently for blockchain development. These are the real tools that I use. Um, I don't show you guys stuff that I don't really use myself. Um, So if y'all like this video, again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And if you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, till next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.